All right, class, welcome. This is our final lecture. This is lecture number 21. And for the end of this class, I thought we would deal with something a little futuristic, but yet also something very contemporary. Um, and that is the idea of driverless cars. Uh, the ethics behind the programming uh, within those cars. Um, today, I have a couple of learning, object uh, learning objectives for you. Um, first, I would like for you to be able to apply the trolley problem. This is something that we tackled in our early weeks, you know, where there's a runaway trolley that's coming down the road or coming down the tracks. It's going to hit one person, but you have the option of pulling this lever, which will take that trolley and divert it, um, killing, sorry, screw that up. There's five people and the trolley's coming and run them over, but you can pull a lever to kill one. Do you pull the lever? So, even though we would, I think most of us would pull that lever to save the five and kill the one, um, what should a car do? And what we're going to do is be applying this trolley problem to, um, to these driverless cars. I'd like for you to be able to recognize the, the ethical implications of these programmed, think, premeditated vehicular homicides. Second, uh, I would like for you to be able to apply several ethical principles to driverless cars um, and various scenarios uh, that they might find themselves in, and then recognize the challenges inherent in each of these principles. And then finally, uh, I would like you to form some type of opinion regarding the best approach uh, to programming driverless cars um, and to do so ethically. So let's start. Um, let's start here. Uh, with the idea of moral principles. Which moral principles are we talking about? Because, let's face it, we are in the midst of a rise in driverless cars. I, I, in our previous content, I've laid out the numerous ways that driving driverless cars are coming to, to us. <laughs> we are they're already on the roads. There is talk of having driverless trucks. Um, and there are a ton of places that are debating the moral questions surrounding these cars. You know, take a, a scenario where you are in a driverless car when suddenly there are five people who run out in front of you. And the only way to avoid hitting them is for the car to steer to the right, to the right. Uh, unfortunately, there's one pedestrian to the right that the car will hit, hit if it does so. So, you know, in the trolley problem, should the car turn to the right? That is, should it kill one or allow five to die? Now, this is an example of premeditated homicide. You might say, well, how is that possible? This is a, an accident. You're just driving down the road. You don't intend for anyone to die. How is this premeditated homicide? Well, for humans, we just will make a snap decision in those sorts of scenarios. We'll quickly assess in micro moments and we'll either steer to the right or we'll run right into the people. Um, but a driverless car will be making this de decision based on programming. And this programming will be written as code and done years before um, this person dies. So in a way, the programmer is deciding in this moment when five people jump out and it means that one person will die, the programmer would be writing the code for the car to respond in that way. So let's apply some moral principles to this to try to understand what is the morally acceptable thing for a uh, driverless car to do. So some argue that the principle that we should be considering when programming these cars is the concept of the do no harm. And in this case, uh, the car ought to do to never do harm. The idea is that if the car steers into the one pedestrian in this example, it is doing harm. Meanwhile, if it just simply stays the course, it is only allowing harm. And since doing harm, as we've discussed in our previous lecture, because doing harm is much worse morally than allowing harm, the car ought to stay the course and run into the five people. Now, with all of these principles, there's going to be some problems. So first, it is unclear that the resulting harm is merely allowed if the car stays the course in this scenario. Uh, imagine that you were the one behind the wheel 
could you really claim after plowing into the five that you merely allowed them to die? And, and second, in, in light of the fact that most people would pull the lever in the original trolley case, isn't it at least sometimes permissible to do harm to a smaller number of people in order to avoid allowing harm to some greater number? Now, let me say that again. Isn't it at least sometimes permissible to do harm in a smaller number in order to avoid allowing harm to a greater number? And, and this type of idea leads us to the second principle. And this is the principle that the car should be programmed to minimize harm. So in this previous case, where they could run into the five or run into the one, the goal should be to do as little harm as possible. Now, there are a couple problems here. First, sometimes this may mean that your pain, your injury, your death, your suffering is the harm that will be caused. So your car will kill you, its own passenger. For instance, imagine that the only way to avoid hitting five people in the scenario is for the car to steer off of a, off a cliff or off of a bridge, resulting with your death. Is that the way that you would want your car to minimize harm? Problem number two. Imagine that in order to avoid a collision, your car either will steer left into a motorcyclist who is not wearing a helmet, or it will steer right into a motorcyclist who is wearing a helmet. So minim minimization of harm requires your car to steer into the motorcyclist who is wearing a helmet, right? The, the, that motorcyclist has a higher chance of survival and not running into the motorcycle who's not wearing a helmet because doing so would almost certainly result in that motorcyclist's death. Thus, in some sense, we are punishing the people who, is, who are being more responsible about safety. Problem number three. Right, what does minimize even mean in this case? Imagine in the near future that facial recognition technology um, is advanced. And in this near future, driverless cars will be able to identify pedestrians and other drivers instantly. Furthermore, it is plausible that it will have access to data about each of these people like through social media. And if faced with a decision to plow into a pedestrian A or pedestrian B, is it permissible for your car to make that decision based on what it knows about each pedestrian? You know, for, for instance, imagine pedestrian A is a famous scientist uh, or that pedestrian B is very old. Does minimization require saving the young over the old or the more productive over the less productive? You know, in essence, we are asking our cars to, in a moment, make um, significant decisions based off of the information that it can gather uh, about each of these people, the value that they bring. And is this the way that we want to minimize harm? Problem number four. Oftentimes, we think that it is justifiable to cause harm to someone when they are acting immorally. So, for instance, uh, this is why ki killing in self-defense is generally seen as morally acceptable, even if killing in general is not. Now, imagine that a driver and his friend decide to play chicken with a driverless car. Right? So, they have their cars and they are coming... Uh, they're playing chicken with it. Right? Who's going to steer away first? Now imagine that the driverless car can avoid harming those two individuals by steering into one pedestrian instead. But here an innocent bystander is harmed in order to save two guilty wrongdoers, right? two morons who are playing chicken. Should driverless cars be sensitive to questions about whether the surrounding individuals are doing something immoral or even illegal. So, for example, should a driverless car steer into one pedestrian on the sidewalk in order to avoid hitting two jaywalkers? If not, is jaywalking now a capitalist a capital offense? Is the driverless car now serving as judge, jury, and executioner? Now, here are two more proposals. 
uh, the legally adjusted minimiz minimalization, right? So this is the way that our cars should be programmed. In this case, the car ought to do as little harm as possible, adjusting for facts about whether the surrounding individuals are acting illegally or immorally. Now, the problem here is that we often draw a moral distinction between breaking the law accidentally versus with malicious intent. For instance, contrast a confused driver who accidentally drives up a one-way street with a malicious driver who intentionally does so for the purpose of putting people in danger. Driverless cars would evaluate the worth of these two people's lives in the same way when one person, again, is being malicious and ir irresponsible. Or consider, it is often legal for a doctor to speed when rushing to, to an emergency room, but how will the car know whether the lawbreaker is such a doctor or not? Or, here's another one, the car should be programmed to minimize the worst harm. In this, pro in this proposal, it is not the total harm that would be minimized, but rather the worst kind of harm that would be minimized. So, for instance, it is clearly better to break two people's arms than to kill one person. This is because death is much, much, much worse kind of harm than breaking an arm. But then we get into all sorts of sticky calculations. So, for instance, is paralyzing a hundred children better than killing one pedestrian? So, if we're trying to minimize harm, how do you mathematically uh, affix a number to... Uh, to argue which is and which isn't um, a um, isn't a pain. Uh, 